Man, I really wish we could go back to the good old days of being outside. Chase we Hockey here with the Blue Food Tone Review in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Realm. So what is it about? Pretty simple premise, actually. Scott Lang and Gank are about to get sucked into the quantum verse, and Kang is down there, and he wants to escape. Basically, you know the story by watching the trailer. And what I meant by the beginning is going to be talked about pretty soon. But I like this movie. I thought it was okay. Exiting the theater, I was like, yeah, I would watch this over Doctor Strange, the new Thor, and Black Panther. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, am I just being too nice to the movie? But let's just talk about the positives of the movie first. Whoa! This is Chase from the Quantum Realm. I totally forgot my original review to put on these 3D glasses and tell you how the 3D was. So we're going to do this now, and you're going to see the old Chase come back from another Quantum Realm universe. I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but let's talk about the 3D real quick. So the 3D wasn't bad. See, you see this eye mask glasses? Now, all of a sudden, these IMAX glasses that like we're getting now are a lot smaller than this. And when you have big frame glasses like this, you're like, come on. So I was just like this the whole time. I wouldn't blame on the movie. I would blame on the glasses. But let's put these back on and talk about the 3D. I think the 3D effects were okay. They're not no Doctor Strange, Multiverse, and Madness 3D effects because that worked a lot better than this one. Maybe because it was more on a... But so was Doctor Strange. But Doctor Strange felt more, you know outside-ish than this one. This one really felt like on the Mandalorian stage, which felt a lot more CGI, which is fine. And some of the 3D effects were pretty good. But overall, is it needed? Not so much. Nothing was popping out the screen. Nothing was like, oh shit, that's cool. Ant-Man's coming for me. I think there's maybe one or two scenes where I was like, okay, that benefited from it. But there is a reason why Avatar and IMAX was basically all 3D. And what this movie theater and this 3D showing, there's only one per day. And that's at the 3.30 showing. So that's not really promoting 3D whatsoever. But like I said, if you're a 3D enthusiast like I am, I think you'll enjoy the depth perception overall. But if you're just looking like, oh, do I need to do 3D or 2D? There ain't no avatar way of water. And you could probably skip 3D if you're on that 50-50 line. Now, let's get back to the review and go back to the chase without the 3D goggles. Like, everyone is going to say Jonathan Majors is fantastic in the film. This, he's in Devotion. He's in so many other movies where I, yep, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's going to get Oscar winner, I'd say, in the next 10 years, hands down. I'm calling it in the next 10 years, he will have an Oscar in his hand. Uh, I do think the acting overall, though, is not bad. Pretty solid. I do think, though, this takes way too much from other movies. What I mean by that is, you know, Guardian of the Galaxies and other universes spanning movies. But that's not really talking about the positives. It could be because it does look cool on some levels. Like, oh, that's kind of a cool creature design. That's a cool creature design. At least he did decide to do something different and they all don't look the same. Even though it makes you wonder where the hell do they all come from. But that might just be a huge plot hole that I'm overthinking it as well. Uh, I don't remember the score that much. Cinematography, there is no cinematography because they're literally on a soundstage, period, dot. Even when they're in San Francisco, you're like, yeah, that's just a normal ass street that you probably could film anywhere in Georgia or something like that. I bet you filming in California was probably too damn expensive in the first place. Uh, so let's just talk about the movie as a whole, about the negatives, everything like that. You do have a camera in this movie that really does nothing to uh, enhance the story. It just felt like a mix of Thor, Ragnarok, Garden of the Galaxies with nothing original and a sprinkle, a little bit of Avengers, Infinity War, and Endgame. And that's what I got from this movie. I would say the biggest fault, people are liking casting this movie. I'm not liking this character whatsoever. Like, I don't know, like, where it's going. Also, just where this ends completely. You're like, okay, I see where you're ending the movie and it does put a little smile on your face and you're like, okay. It makes someone think. But the two end credits, I think the mid one really, like, I let's just put it this way. I think we're going way, 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 way too much in this multiverse. We are expanding it way too completely. 
Then the final one goes more into the multiverse, but it's more contained, if you want to put it that way. But I think the mid one, I'm just like, are we expanding this way too big? And I understand why now James Gunn might be like, I kind of want to get out of this universe because it's just going way off the freaking rails. So let's continue talking about Cassie's character. You see in the beginning or in the trailer where she's walking out of the jail like, oh, I'm a, I'm a cool bitch. I'm leaving jail. And then the one she's like, dad. I'm like, that just doesn't look good. Uh, but the dialogue in the story. Uh, I don't know if they're promoting socialism or in general, especially with what Hank Pym says. To get this movie in China, I don't know how you're comparing socialism to ants going through the quantum verse and working together. That's not socialism whatsoever. Uh, we get Stalin, we get North Korea, Venezuela, Cuba. Um, are you saying they're all ants working for the machine? What well, I I don't understand that dialogue at the very beginning where she's like. I'm in jail because the cops are getting rid of these homeless camps in San Francisco because of the blimp. Are you, are you sure it's the blimp? Because I'm pretty sure homeless people were there before the blimp because San Francisco has high fucking taxes. You even have poop patrols. San Francisco has fucking poop patrols. So don't blame that on the blimp. Blame that on the policy where it's cheaper for workers to get to sit in a little parking spot on the street than rent. Why, why, why is that not happening anywhere else in the world? Oh, blame on the fucking blimp. So it's the dialogue that's fucking horrendous in this movie. Like, I don't know what you're trying to promote. Are you trying to get this movie in China? Because I'm pretty sure Black Panther wasn't. I'm pretty sure Thor wasn't. And I'm also pretty sure Doctor Strange wasn't. So I don't know the agenda on the actual dialogue in this movie. So the more I think about this movie, the more I'm like, I don't know if I want to rewatch it. I mean, I rewatched Doctor Strange two and a half times. I hate uh, the America Chavez character. Period. Uh, Thor, Love and Thunder, I did watch it twice. I don't think there was a script whatsoever. Is it a watchable movie? Yes, but that humor doesn't work whatsoever. Black Panther, uh, Wakanda Forever, that movie as a whole just doesn't work. The more I think about it, the more like that has way too many plot holes whatsoever and the whole unity message with all these films it's like there's no such thing we need to stop thinking about that but we're talking about ant-man and the wasp quantum realm uh if they make a fourth one i think michael douglas said he'll only do it if he dies so i guess now you know if michael douglas is in the fourth one he's gonna die so spoiler but i think the movie is mid at best it's not bad it's not horrific it's not amazing it's mid at best and the worst part people are saying it's a cgi the cgi really didn't bother me but i just wish we would go to the outside world like ant-man being in this realm and his power just going up and down and just i just want to know where the fuck these characters came from you have no idea where this world came from like kane came down then you have you know michelle pfeiffer but you're like what what what, what, the, what, what? there's a lot of shit that's not told and yeah that's all i'm gonna leave it there so Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Realm, will receive a 2.5 out of 5 with futons, which equals at 50%. I would more give like a 55%, you know, on the realm. But given a positive, I walked out of the theater saying 60%, maybe. But when I'm driving home, thinking about the story, I'm like, what? this is how you introduce Kang? I don't know if that was the best way. Let's see the Critics News scores gave this one. Yeah, Critics say 48% with 281 of them. Audience score 84% over 1,000. Here's Critics Consensus. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum... Quantum... Wait. Quantum Mania? Why can't I say that now all of a sudden? Mostly lacks the spark of the fun that elevated earlier adventures, but Jonathan Majors King is a thrilling villain pose to alter the course of the MCU. Uh, The problem is... How? I... I I don't know where they're going to go from here. Guardian of the Galaxies. Yes, this is like their final hurrah. I'm pretty freaking excited for that. The Marvels, not excited whatsoever. So let's see what this does as a whole. 48, 50, 84. Chase out with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you think Futon, Toby, Blue Tones. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And this movie was very annoying on some level. Some guy behind me wouldn't shut the fuck up. 
And there's a little girl that kept running back and forth, like circling our row. And the dude next to me, we were just kind of laughing. And there's this guy like far down was speaking Spanish for like a minute straight. And some guy was like, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, yeah, shut the fuck up. 